Well, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining me in my shop here. Um, so I'm going to be proceeding with the next step of the calibration of this uh, unit. Um, as suggested by some of you, maybe I'd be wise to uh, test the two tubes that are in the unit before I get too much further into this. I think that's probably a smart idea. I don't have any reason to think they're not bad, but I don't have anything in my head on that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test these two tubes. And then the next thing, we're going to look at the uh, next step instructions. Uh, they're complex and they are not uh, integrally self-explaining. It's not clear why you're doing what they're asking you to do, which is typical of alignment and calibration instructions. So uh, you can just follow the steps kind of blindly and hope it all works out or, or try to get a little deeper understanding of why they're having you do what it is they want you to do. Part of that is done with a 6L6 tube or with this device set up to test a 6L6. Uh, I spent some time last night looking for one I could not find. Wouldn't you believe it? I could not find a 6L6. I started wondering why, why would the builders of this or designers of this require a 6L6 for the alignment process. And the answer I came up with was the 6L6 was probably the most stocked tube back in the day when, when this thing was built. And all repairmen had many 6L6s because they were output tubes and they were burning out and wearing out. And regularly they were changing them up. Uh, so if you want to align, uh, build alignment instructions or calibration instructions, would make sense to pick a tube to build them around that everybody had. So that's why I think the 6L6 is, uh, is quoted in here, but I'm not sure about that. So I can get a few steps into the next, I can follow a couple of the next, I, I can go forward a certain distance without a 6L6 and then at that point I'm going to have to wrestle with this question of uh, does it have to be a 6L6 or can I just pick another similar tube and set it up for that. Um, so let's get on with testing these two tubes in my other tube tester. Sounds like a good idea. Pull this guy out. This is the very common 5U4, I'm pretty sure. 5U4. Okay, Mr. 5U4, just come on over here. U4. We'll put this on five right away. Now, this is, this tester. Uh, you should not be putting tubes in it while you're setting it up. And this probably, if you don't know for sure, that's the rule you should follow with all these uh, tube testers. You don't have the tube in it while you're setting it up. Signals are for rectifier. No bias setting. Zero seven zero three zero zero. Seven zero three zero P zero six zero P zero six zero P zero six zero sensitivity twenty five plate on E so it has a, a couple of notes here. One is note F. Note F usually means you get a short appearing on number five here. It may not be number five though. And then we, it's a two part tube. It's a double rectifier. So we do a P1, P2 and do, do two tests on here. We're all set to go. Oh, I didn't put the tube in. Well, we're not quite all set to go. Which so good is it? I think it's this one here. There we go. We saw the pilot light dim. The first one in. Now, because I'm turning myself into a master tube tester, and that's where I'm going to end up at the end of this long process here. That's what I hope, anyway. I get better at doing this kind of stuff. Shorts. Watching the meter. There's the short on one, as the note described. So this should read above the uh, 
This is a rectifier is okay, so it should come up a little past halfway. The rectifier is okay. There we go. That's one half. That's the other half. Perfectly fine too. It doesn't look like an original to me. This looks like a replacement because wow, this is a beauty. Made in the USA. Yeah, this is a beauty. The 5U4, I think, is the 5Y3, 5Y4, and uh, number 80. I think that's the whole history of that rectifier, too. So I'm getting out the uh, the other guy. What is the other guy? The other guy is a... I can read it on here. Wasn't it a 6x4? Wasn't that what it was? 6x4, that's what it is. Another rectifier too. 6x4. Leave that that way for now until we know for sure it's a 6 volt. 6 volt. 6x. Lots of tubes start with the number 6. 6x4. 6 6.3. Rectifier 3076. 30760. 3 Zero, seven, six, zero. I never double checked my last settings. P100. P100. 26. E. P1 and P2. No, no shorts note. Okay, let's double check this time. 6.3. Three zero seven six zero three zero seven six zero P one hundred P one hundred Okay in she goes so I think I saw a very quick flash of that light. Oh yes, I was gonna talk about becoming a master a master checker of tubes, so that means I need to be doing this line check thing a little more often that's if you want to get a, a, a quantitative result on one of these machines if it's capable a lot of these uh, tube testers are not capable of quantitative results but surely you can only believe this when the whole thing is set up absolutely perfectly including the line voltage adjust okay so in this case and I didn't do that on the last two but it was clearly good P1, P2, P1. Test, short first chip, come on. No short showing at all, just the way it's supposed to be. That was a dud, what happened? Couldn't get anything to test. You know what, I didn't think this thing heated up. Just watching this flicker. Wow, now it's heating up. Oh, doesn't. What's going wrong here? It doesn't look like that in the uh, in the machine. Yikes! That doesn't look right. Now these tubes tend to run hot, but that just looks crazy. Six point three looks crazy. Looks crazy. It looks crazy. But it works. And it's a double. Good two. Well, I don't know why it's glowing like that. Wow. I'm sure it doesn't glow like that in the air. Oh, Tigger. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get this back in the machine. We'll look and see, but this was glowing. This was close to a light bulb the way it was glowing. What, what could be possibly wrong here? I don't know. To be honest with you. Well, again, I don't think there's anything to be concerned about with these two tubes. Pop them back in. And if you think about it, what kind of mileage would a tube tester get? They compare it to a radio. Okay, so you come in in the morning, you turn your radio on, it, it, it plays six hours a day, you turn it off. Six hours a day, every day. But these things are lucky to get 15 minutes of operation uh, once a week. 
if even that. I mean, it depends upon the environment. Here in my house, something like this would get operated once a week. Uh, in your average home, yeah, this is not in your average home. <laughs> okay, so I think we're ready to start the next step, which w which involved uh, reading over the uh, instructions. Uh, you can see I, I've numbered all these aid in uh, my confusion perhaps. Let's take a look at the uh, manual now. Okay, so here we are. Now we, we took care of all this stuff yesterday and we stopped here at plate bridge balance. A quick scan through this to see if this is where the 6L6 is required and the answer is no. In, in reading these instructions down to K here, the impression I get is there's a chance that something, I believe it's one of the transformers, can be wired backwards, and I don't mean in error. I mean it, it, it looks like the transformer itself has a balance issue, and you're trying to compensate for it uh, in the device with an adjustment. But there's a chance the transformer is such that you cannot adjust it. You've got to switch wires. That's what all this is. This is all about switching a couple of wires around and then trying again. So that's the basic, the basic thing in here is set it up, see if you can do it. If you can't, switch these wires around and try it again. While you're doing it, you need to insert a temporary 10 watt, 2000 ohm resistor. If you don't own one, there's one in the set you can remove. Disconnect R10 and use it if you want. So I'm just going through this quickly now. Uh, so set all these controls. Here we are. Insert line cord, turn on, adjust line adjust, meter switch to test, rotate test switch, noted meter to flex off zero. This is what this test is all about this. Getting the meter to not deflect off zero when you put it in test mode with this resistor in place. If it does deflect, try adjusting the potentiometer P4. P4, now I should have labeled that with the number four. So I'm looking for it. Okay, you see it. Now here's the deal. Um, if the situation only gets worse, and bearing in mind you've been instructed to move all these controls maximum counterclockwise or something like that, well, one way or the other, maximize. Here we are, counterclockwise. So the expectation is this control is already off on the counterclockwise side, and you're bringing it clockwise into calibration. But if you can't do that, then you switch these wires around and try it again. Then you remove the resistor and then we're done. So I can get through this today and that's pretty good. Let me let me get everything set up to do this. I gotta find this resistor, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I've soldered in two 1000 ohm resistors in series here to achieve the 2K 10 watt to ground connection from this terminal over to a ground terminal. This is a ground terminal here. Okay, and uh, what is next? Let's take a look. What does it say? Turn power off. Make certain switch S5 plate shunt is in a 30k position. And it is. 30k position. Here, I'm just checking it down here. Let's move back a little bit here. Okay, and next thing is um, temporarily attach a 2k 10 watt. I did that. Uh, switch S2 number one. Luckily, um, if we just shoot up here to this diagram, they show it. Here's switch S2, and there's number one uh, right there. That's where I've soldered the resistor. Okay. A through zero bias and filament at maximum counterclockwise. A through O. They should all still be in there counterclockwise position. You just kind of look at them and see they're all there. 
except maybe not the line adjust. I'm going to just leave that as is. There we go. That's a little better. Next step here. Filament control. Yep. Meter switch to line. Okay, that's where it is. Short switch to test normal. Short switch on test normal. Meter slide switch to normal. Meter slide switch is on normal. Was I going to clean these guys or did I? I did, I did this one. I think this one down here is a little bit questionable. Uh, bias slide switch to 10 volts. It's on 10 volts. Test switch to off. Test swing. Test switch to off. Is this the test switch? This is the test switch. It's off. Test switch says right there. Test switch is off. Power switch. They put a really tiny power switch on this. Then they put something a little bolder on here, like a red colored switch or something to kind of kind of say, hey man, I'm a big powerful switch here. Meter slide switch. Insert line cord. Push off. Life on switch to on adjust line adjust okay well they want us to plug this guy in okay quick check on the back uh, the only thing that's going on is these resistors this resistor those resistors are in there power on okay I'm doing the dim bulb thing here Okay, so you can see this guy here. Okay, power off, switch on, power on. There we go. Get a little bit of dim bulb action there. So this guy has his own dim dim bulb right here. Supply voltage 104. I got a tube in here. I don't think this tube should be in there. Uh, I'm sure it shouldn't be in there during this. Let's pull it out. Yeah, really. Shouldn't have a tube in there with all these things set randomly. <gasps> Jimmy! Ha! Huh. I wonder what I did to this. Probably nothing. Okay, so I see this guy's upscale. Let's go full. Now I put a, a knob on this control last night. I manipulated the control when I did it, so not surprising. The other thing too is I'm doing this with this meter tipped, not not only standing up, but standing up sideways. So, you know, grain of salt on all this, I'm afraid. Uh, and I just don't want to lay it down to, well, you know, I'll lay it down and compare. So we adjust the line here. So that should be uh, resulting in five volts on that test point. Let me get this right on the money here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, tip the unit flat. I'm going to see what happens to that meter now. I'm going to grab this thing while it's operating. Grab it in a nice, safe place. Right here. This is plenty safe. Here we go. So the meter has gone way up in doing that. So this tells me I, I really, really can't carry on here. So that's balancing on one of the vacuum tubes, if I put it like that. We need this held just like this. I need to hold it just like this. How can I do that? What have I got that will hold it like that? I don't know. Um, I don't, um, you know what I can do here? Uh, I think I can block under here. There. Okay, so. I mean, this isn't standing up perfectly now, but at least it's not on its side anymore, and, and all these readings will be off. And then how did I do the calibration on it? Duh. I think I did the calibration on this with the meter on its side. That means the only time, I mean, that means this is no longer accurate, uh, precisely accurate. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think I, I really think I need I need to fix this. <laughs> this line thing, 
underlies the accuracy of all the tests. Whoops, all the tests. So if I slouch on this, I'm really uh, doing a bad, bad thing. So we're going to have to back up now. What if I stand it right up? So this machine is probably intended to be used laying flat. Uh, the feet are flat. Think about that, Jim. The feet are on the back, flat. It doesn't have feet on the bottom of the uh, of the box, which incidentally I washed up last night. It still looks kind of crappy, but uh, so almost certainly the device is intended to be used flat. That puts the least amount of, of mechanical weirdness on the meter too. Now I've got it tipped on a bit of an angle here, mostly to make it uh, easily viewable to me and the camera too. Is that enough to throw it off? Well, let me zero this guy up and we'll move him around a bit. Zero him up, center scale him. I'll center scale him. A fair bit of heat developing in this rheostat down here. <laughs> Coming through on the screw heads. I shouldn't say a fair bit, just a wee bit. Almost inevitably, the, these controls are going to produce some heat. Okay, we have right on. Dead on. Now, tip it totally level. This is hardly a change. Tip it back. You know what? The meter's moving. So here, it's it's centered. Here, it's actually moved the touch. Wow, it's not much. It's not much, that's for sure. Let's get it. Let's see if we can get a really crazy close look at this. Well, here's what you see with that camera. Okay, so we're we're tipped on a bit of an angle. You can't tell in the camera now. Oh, who's at the door? Guess who? Yes, it's Peanut the Wonder Cat has come to join us. So I will adjust this now and get this line right up. Bingo, dead on here. So probably the line voltage varied a little bit while in the last couple of minutes. There we are. Look at how rigid that is. Hard to believe the line voltage is that steady. Moving a little bit. Now I'm going to tip the meter level, right? It's just a few degrees off level. I will tip it level. There we go. And you can see the meter moved. I'll now tip it back. And it didn't really come back. Let's try that again. I have to do this just once and get it in my head how sensitive this really is. So I'm just trying to move the meter right on. It's pretty tough to get it to stop right on the money. I can't. Okay, it's one side or the other. So we'll go over there. That's moving. It's, it's changing all the way. So right on the one. Level out. Well, it didn't change much, did it? And go down. Changes it, like one one uh, needle width to the right. That's what it's doing. If I go higher, higher. What am I doing? To, I don't know what time. But for sure, if you were to stand this guy right up, I'm going to try that just for one last check. Okay, let me, let's put it level. This is how this is going to have to be done. So I got it level. We'll adjust this or make a note of where it is. So it's just on the edge of the one. Now, when I stand this up, I'm going to drop the camera, unfortunately. This is a, this is a two-hand deal. So I'm going to take the camera off. Make you stare at nothing for a moment. I'm just going to just, just hold the fort there. You know, to trust me to stand this baby up. Oh, my gosh. I stood it up. And it's now reading, I'd say, on the low side of the digit one. It hardly changed. I'm going to put it back down. It's up on the, in the zero in the one level. And then, okay, that's enough of this. I've done enough of this. Hold on. Up here. I have something to look at here. Yeah, I, I didn't drop it yet. Okie dokie. Yeah, strange looking view up there. That's kind of 
interesting. Okay, we're all set. I don't need this camera really here. Okay, that might have seemed like overkill. Yeah, it probably was. Let us carry on here. Confuse myself with too many things. Oh, I was going to adjust that for crying out loud. Right. Oh, I have to hook up the AC voltmeter and a whole bunch of stuff. You know what? I got to do this again. I've got to do this again. Chassis ground terminal two of center arm of P5. 2.8 volts. Okay, well, let me get everything set up for that. Okay, so I've connected up to uh, the center terminal of P5 here with the AC uh, meter you see sitting there with a 3.1 on it. And let's read the instructions here properly without changing any settings. Oh, 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 oh. Adjust for 2.8 volts. And what am I adjusting? Adjust, I guess I'm adjusting P5. I guess it must be P5. Okay. P5 is this one. Now, look, look what I've had to do here. So I've had to stand this level to make sure the meter's level, to make sure there's no interference or any uh, any moments working on the meter here. Uh, now, to get at the, all the things I have to adjust, I have to go under here like this. So, kind of get under there and get back to this panel back here. A little scary sticking your hand under there. To be honest with you, that's what it's going to take uh, to do this. Now, so the adjustment is... Uh, you know what, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on P5A. How did I manage to make that mistake? I studied this like crazy. P5. Okay, now to make this adjustment, first we set the meter right in the middle. And then we adjust that for 2.8 volts AC. I wonder if I made a mistake last time around. 2.8. Oop. Take much of a touch there. So when you look, I'm on the uh, you know this is three decimal point. So for crying out loud, I got to be there. There we are. That's that's 2.8 by anybody's. Uh, unfortunately, the control now is pointing over this way. I'd rather it would be pointing straight up. This is dead center. So what I've done is I've made dead center a certain voltage. I can move the pointer now, and just, just for my own sake. This control is getting hot. It's getting quite hot, in fact. I'm a little surprised how much heat is coming out of here. So nominally, this control pointed straight up should give that kind of indication when the line voltage is 122 volts, 0.6. Line adjust, Pulls that up and down. Wow, this is really getting warm. I know it's supposed to get warm, but this is pushing heat all through here. Or, or is that the vacuum tube? Well, how do you like that? So the big vacuum tube is right in here, heating this up. It's definitely heat coming from this adjustment. It's a big honker. It's a big honking metal guy here. Take a look. It's a big honking metal thing here trying to sink its heat and uh, convect it away, really. Sink it into this panel and convect it away, ultimately. Okay. Everything's holding in fine. So I think we can just lay off this uh, line thing and uh, assume we're 100% on it. Even though I got this resistor installed. Hey, is that why this thing's getting so hot? It's a 10-watt resistor. Why did they want me to install a temporary 10-watt resistor? And where is that resistor now? Here it is here. 
How hot is it? Oh, Jesus, son of a gun. <laughs> okay, so you can translate that to, that's hot enough to burn you. So that's why this is getting hot. These are getting hot. And now my finger is getting hot. What a fool, eh? You didn't see it. I laid my finger up against it there. And, you know, a slow heat response. So by the time you feel it, meow. I really should have just stuck my upper lip on that. That would have been good. Now, I guess we can take this meter off before we have an accident with it. Okay, out you go. I start following the rest of the instructions now. I think we can get through this. Turn power off. <laughs> Gladly, turn power off. Make certain switch S5 plate shunt is in 30K. It is in 30K. Temporarily, temporarily attach a 2K 10 watt resistor. Did that. Left it on too long, I think. Controls A through 0 all counterclockwise. That's all done. Short slit switch to test normal. Test normal. Meter slide switch to normal. Meter slide switch to normal. You know, I don't mind doing this over and over because it's the only way you get familiar with this. So, uh, bias slide switch to 10 volts. Bias slide switch on 10. Test switch to off. Uh, test switch to off. Off. Test switch. Test switch to off. How about when you elevate our camera a little bit? I'll use the uh, drone. I have my drone running now. There. That's a drone view. Um, insert line cord. Push switch on. Adjust line adjust. This is where I got to last time. Switch the meter switch to test. Rotate test switch to test. And note if meter deflects off zero. If it does deflect, try adjusting P4. So I gotta find, I gotta spot P4. P4 is down under here. So I'll take a look, get myself ready. So P4, yikes. Uh, that's, a, not, that's a tough one to adjust from up here. I'm gonna use a non-conductive tool. Let's see if I can get in there on it. I don't want to stick a metal screwdriver in this spot here. This is not going to do it. I was sticking a metal end in. Okay, I can. It's such a narrow uh, piece here, you know. Uh, it's hard to get torque. But I think I can do it. Uh, I can probably do it with this, actually. No, I'm going to check this. Go down. Wait, I've got a screwdriver that's got insulation on it. Where is that? There we are. Down here. This screwdriver gives a much wider handle, a lot more power. Oh, that's good. That's no problem. That's for sure. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready on the P4. Okay. How come this isn't sitting on zero? Oh my gosh, really? This is what you're going to do to me now? <sighs> Probably because I zeroed this thing up with it on its side or on its head or... I don't know. Oh my god, let's check. Yeah, okay, so i got to do that whole thing again with the 5 volts. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Okay, the set is off at the moment. This goes on to number five, not five A. Center pin. Ground this terminal. Still on AC. Everything's ready. We apply the switch. Apply the switch. I've applied the switch. Line. We're no dim bulbs over here, but there's a dim bulb in here. This one here, this fuse bulb. And 
look at that. It's not it's not where it needs to be. This is coming up correct. So we just adjust this now. I have it on the center. Oh, I'm doing this with that crazy 10 watt resistor in there. You know what? This is this is not correct. This is not the right thing to do. This is not the right thing to do. I already know that 10 watt resistor is pulling a lot of power. Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm inventing my own tests here while I do this. Oh, son of a gun! So I got to I got to remove these. I got to remove the resistor. No doubt about it. Sooner or later, I'm going to get there. So the easiest way to do that is just to unsolder it here. Power's off. Yeah. How do these things how does this kind of stuff get boobed up? You go forward in the uh, procedure and then decide you gotta go back. When you go back here, you make changes on the way you forgot about just the resistors here. You go back, things aren't set the same. And you just you just spiral, spiral, downward spiral. Downward spiral. I'm on a downward spiral now. I'm a lazy son of a gun. I couldn't unsolder. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut this, cut this, cut this. No, I'm cut this. I'm lazy. Let's not cut it. Okay. Anyway, I want these resistors to be usable afterwards for other projects. Apart. See, I wasn't even going to solder these. I was just going to twist them up. I decided I'd be good, and I'll solder them. And now, look at the situation. There. Okay. Well, still soldered. Ends. Okay, that guy's out of the way. Mr. 5 volt meter is back on here. And, uh, I'm ready to do the adjustment. It's this one here. Five. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, power on. Power's on. Resistors disconnected. Because it has a dim bulb in here, any because it basically it's a resistor in the power supply. Any variation in current draw from the power supply is going to cause the power supply voltage to go down or up. That's going to necessitate repeated adjustment of this. Uh, and so I so I have read in the instructions. You are constantly going back and checking this. It's a little different than most of the other testers kind of say, you know, turn it on, check the line, carry on. Some of them say, when the tube's in and operating, check the line, uh, line voltage. And I, I'm reckless on all this stuff because I never do precision tube testing, right? I'm just looking to see, gee, does this thing work at all? Okay, so we'll set this in the middle now. and see if we get 2.8 volts again. There's the middle. No. <laughs> Yes, sir. -y. That's what I say. I say yes, sir. -y. I say watch out for that hot thing there, Jim. Okay, 2.8. Show me 2.8. Now, conceivably, it's not running with as much. Power. 
a draw. Well, there you are. That's 2.8, man. That's 2.8. And she's lined up nicely there. And the pointer is almost straight up. Let's, let's put it straight up. Again, this is only straight up when it's 22.9. 122.9. Power off. Meter out. Okay. That's good. Okay, here we go. Let's put the power on here again. Okay, watch the line come up properly, hopefully. What are we at? One we're at one twenty three point three volts now, so uh, next step. And remember, I don't want to. Oh, power off. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Didn't reconnect these two. Okay. Uh, and that's how you make mistakes. <laughs> okay, apparently, there's no voltage here to get a shock from. Apparently. That's good. That's going to do the trick. Once again, power on. So this light, uh, the fuse light, is kind of hidden from view back in the panel here. But if you are generating a short circuit in here, it's a good chance you wouldn't even spot this. Okay, so current line voltage 122.8 this time. We're a little low on here. Don't adjust anything. Because this is all about something else now. It's not about this anymore. It doesn't say adjust it, does it? Turn power off. Make certain switch plate shunts in 30k. Temporarily attach. Did all that. Do not have. Use that thing. A to zero. Counterbalance. Meter switch to line. Short switch to test. Normal. Short switch to test normal. Uh, meter slide switch to normal. Meter slide switch to normal. Bias slide switch to 10. Yep. Test switch to off. Test switch to off. Well, that's where, yeah. Insert line cord. Oh, I've already done that. <laughs> oh, adjust line adjust. Well, it says adjust it. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to follow the instructions verbatim here. Insert line cord. Push on, adjust line adjust to center scale reading, switch meter to test. Line adjust, center scale reading, switch to test. Rotate test, switch meter to test. Uh, rotate test switch to test. And note if meter deflects off zero. Okay. Let's get let's get the close up one here. This will be good for me too. Flip over to that camera now. I'm bearing. Hang on, everybody. Hold on tight. Okay. Maybe a little focus on that one would help. Oh, not quite on zero, is it? Yeah, you bad meter, you. Well, I'm going to leave it just where it is. We will now flip the switch and see if it moves. Here we go. Doesn't move. I gotta hold still when I <laughs> everything holds still. Well that's a gigantic no. So the little movements are me shaking shaking the uh I'll turn it real slow. You can't even tell I turned it. Is that, is, that, is that it? That, that wasn't very <laughs> it's not very satisfying. Should I move the potentiometer adjustment for this P4 and see if I can mess this up? Yeah, let's try that. P4, oh, that was the tough one too. And I gotta hold the test button. Then this whole thing is cooking up while I'm doing it. It's still not hot. 
Okay, we got we got time. We've got thermal capacity here. Okay, we're trying to get the. Uh, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm getting into control number four here, and we're going to turn it a bit. Okay, so I'm going to put this on test mode. Well, you're supposed to turn it on test mode. I think so. It's in test mode, and now I move the control. You know, nothing happening. So that does not bode well for any of this. Off test test mode. Something. Uh, so either this is a great unit, or or this test didn't work at all. Uh, let me just look everything over here once again. Hmm. Uh, test. Thirty K. Didn't seem to care about much else on here. This is on test. What what am I overlooking? The gas test. How come this is shoved over? This must be spring loaded. Do I dare push that to find out? I, I don't think I should. Normal. These resistors getting warm again? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just stick your finger on there, Jim, and find out. How about we do it a little bit on the smarter side? Maybe maybe these aren't, aren't running this time. 140C. Yeah, no 155. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder they're calling for 10 watts. Good thing I put two fives there. Wow, that's really hot. No wonder I came as close to burning my finger for real as I want to. So let's uh, kill the power because things are getting hot. Ponder the situation here. See, the problem here is the instructions tell you to do these things, but they don't help you understand why you're doing them or, or what it is you're supposed to find. Um, so I, I could proceed on past this test on the assumption that uh, what happened here is okay. Because I turned the control number four and saw no effect from it whatsoever, it, it really makes me think something's wrong here. I'm going to ponder that situation for a while and see if I can come up with uh, something that might prove one way or another that the test I just did is, is okay or there's something amiss in here that needs to be tracked down. I wonder which it is. Uh, thanks for watching. I think this might be the end of the video here for today. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we'll see how my day goes. So maybe I'll see you on the next video, or maybe I'll see you in seconds. See you in any case.